Uh, good afternoon. I almost said morning. <laughs> good afternoon from Nebraska. Good morning from New Zealand to uh, this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, uh, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. Uh, we broadcast the show every Wednesday. Uh, normal time is at 10 a.m. Central Time. Today is a special time. Um, we're here at 3 p.m. Central Time. Um, and we do it every Wednesday, though. And um, if you are, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show um, every week as we are doing today, and it will be available on our website for you to watch in the archives later and at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where to access all of those recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Um, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries, uh, so similar to your state library. Uh, so we provide services and training and resources to all types of libraries, so we will have shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, public, academic, K-12, uh, corrections, museums, historical societies. Really, our only criteria is that something to do with libraries. Uh, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do presentations and we bring in guest speakers sometimes. And um, that's what we have here is kind of a mixture. Um, it is the last Wednesday of the month, which means it's also a pretty sweet tech day on Encompass Live. Yeah. Um, that is when Amanda Sweet, our technology innovation librarian, always comes on the show every last Wednesday of the month to do something techie related. Um, hello, Amanda. Hello. <laughs> Um, and then we have other tech-related shows other times of the month. Sometimes it depends on what our, who we've got. But you always can depend on the last Wednesday of the month. It'll always be Amanda with something techie. And she has and brought on um, as some guest presenters for us today, uh, joining us, <coughs> excuse me, live from New Zealand. Yay. Um, Rennell and Bruce, who are both from uh, Kai's clan, Kai's education. Uh, are going to talk about um, some great resources that they have. Um, so I'll just hand it over to you, Amanda, uh, maybe to start off explaining how this all came to be, what we do here at the commission with them as well. Yeah. So I'll give you kind of a quick intro about how I stumbled across Kai's clan. Um, so I go to all these different conferences and events, and I just kind of track these different tech trends. And Brian Pitchman, he's with the Evolve Project. He actually let me know about Kai's clan, let me play with it, and then it just snowballed from there. So I decided to add the classroom pack of Kai's clan to the tech kits or the mail that get distributed out through pretty much schools, libraries across Nebraska. So if you are a school or a library in the state of Nebraska, you can actually check out and use Kai's Clan for yourself. It comes with the 12 pack of little robots that you'll actually get to see. Would you mind holding up one of them? Sure. There it is. Adorable They're little grippers and everything. Look at that. <laughs> Aren't they? Yeah. So those come with like two little mats that you can use. One is an automated warehouse. I use that to kind of introduce the advanced manufacturing concepts. We do a little bit of career exploration. You can also download some of the career exploration packs that I've got available. And there's also a handy dandy guide that'll help you get started with um, using Kai's clan, getting it set up and using it to introduce all these cool industry 4.0 topics. I almost said industry 6.0, but that's not right. It just feels like it. So <laughs> we'll get there someday. <laughs> and so I will actually hand it over to you all to start talking about Kai's clan. And if you could give yourself a little introduction, kind of talk about how you got started and then dig into what you were going to do. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, you can see our screen, OK? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Your slide. Yeah. Perfect. OK. Just click on to the next one. So um, yeah, um, I, I'm the founder. My name's Bruce uh, of uh, Kai's, Kai's Education. 
And, you know, when my son was uh, going to school uh, and learning coding, um, I, was so, I was so proud of him because he was like following in my footsteps, you know, of learning to code. But then when, when I realized what he was actually doing, I just, I just felt this huge gap in education on what, what um, you know, technologies we're exposing our kids to. There's so much evolving in the real world and um, not to say that learning is not real, but there was so much evolving uh, in industry and all these things. And I wanted, I wanted more for not just my son, but all kids to be able to have access to, um, you know, industry 4.0 uh, technologies. Um, and I'm now, and I always have to, you know, uh, we always laugh because Bruce is a real, you know, self-confessed geek and. He's got ADHD and he's half blind and not much wrong with the boss, but, um, you know, he is just this amazing creator. So we've done two products. We've done KaiBot and we're actually going to give away a KaiBot. Um, we're going to ask a question. So you're going to have to pay a little bit of attention, um, but that's the KaiBot. But today we're going to bring you Kai's clan, which is a STEM toolbox. Um, and that is sort of a whole encompass of um, a lot of technologies that we put together. And this is um, aimed at K, well, probably grade five to 10. We do try and make it easy though. Um, it, it is complicated having so much technology in one product, uh, but it does give you a wide berth, you know, and, and a low floor and a high ceiling for the classroom. So here you can see some, um, you know, these are not stage photographs. These are kids really engaged in what they're doing. And the great thing with, with Kai's clan is that, you know, you don't have to say to, you know, this student, this is what you're doing today. They can choose their, their, um, their passion. Let, let kids choose their own passions. You know, some are creating, using Minecraft to create, robot avatars that can sit on top of the little Kai Kai robot um, in the virtual space. So I think it's, it's all about collaboration, you know, and here you'll see in all of these pictures, it is not one person with one robot. Um, they all work together to finish their projects. So there's a whole, there's over a hundred projects that's actually sitting in, in um, Kai's clan. And we are going to do a little a live demo as well. So be with us, boring, you know, PowerPoints, but it will give you a little bit of an overview of what the product's about. Now, uh, when it comes to coding, um, you know, we, we really try and uh, create like scaffold approach to it. Um, so we know that, you know, Scratch and Blockly are really good, um, but then you have to do a whole lot of unlearning when you go to text-based coding. And this is a, this is a challenge we have because after all, don't we want our, our our kids and students to be ready for, you know, we get it, what we're doing is we're getting them ready for their STEM careers, if that's what they choose. And we just need to give them a little bit, a little taste of what uh, text-based coding is. And with our uh, translator, it's like speaking American in New Zealand. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it translates in real time between Python and uh, block coding. So you can do either or, you can do one, or you can, teacher can, can lock the, um, the block list so they only have to speak New Zealand. <laughs> Python. And I, and I think, you know, it's not just about we want every kid to be able to code. I mean, you know, our vision is to create um, future trailblazers. And you actually use coding in so many different subjects. You know, it can be maths, it can be history, it can be all sorts of places that you can actually, it's, so it's really cross-curricular. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, some fun things with uh, Kai's clan is that uh, ability, again, to use Tinkercad or any 3D design software and then um, create your own environment. Um, you know, we've got, we've got these mats and we'll show you those, those later. But it's, it's really fun when you see kids using Lego or 3D mm. printing and uh, they stick these little, um, just pass me one of those 3D Mars base. You know, so they'll stick some, there's a little Martian base and you stick a little <laughs> QR code on it. And uh -huh. then the kids can design this maybe in Lego, put a little sticker on top of it, and then design that Martian base, the same Martian base in Tinkercad or Minecraft, and then stick that on top of it 
so that the both the physical and the virtual um you know are aligned because it's okay to work in the digital but we real people we need physical interactions so mm -hmm. it's important to get the kids to do that yeah so i think and it's that really connection of bringing it into uh, so to speak real life and like something you know tangible that they understand why am i learning this well this is why right here physically you can see it yeah and yeah, it's about that tactile, you know, it's the tactile learning as well, which is so important that we need to bring kids not just um, on screen, but also off screen. So, uh, important thing about Kai's, uh, in fact, all of our products, we do kind of overlay. We don't run a simulation. We don't have like a virtual simulation because a simulation is a single thing that's virtual only. We, we run it in real time. So it would be like going to Amazon Warehouse and sitting behind one of their computer screens and controlling the robots there because you've got physical, you've got a virtual screen, but you've also got physical robots that are, that are mirrored together with your computer screen. And we do the same thing with, with um, our products. So um, just like augmented reality, we've also got virtual reality. Um, and for example, here you'll see, I just love that this is sort of on the rescue run mat. We've got old Thor, you know, he's stomping around the front there. We've got the knight on his horse, the hot air balloon. Those are actually three different robots that the students then can control. So each student um, can code their own robot, but they can interact with the other robots and the other um, QR codes on the mats. And, and, you know, you, I'm sure as a viewer, you're visualizing this as yourself, but wait until you get, you know, a dozen or so kids around uh, around the mat and they're doing, you know, interacting. It It, it is chaos, <laughs> but there is a lot of learning going on. It's a happy little chaos, though. I like <laughs> it. You know. That's right. You're speaking from experience. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, senses. This is Bruce's favorite topic. Not about the sad dog and the sad plant, Bruce. Yeah, but uh, you know, <laughs> we've we've made sensor data, sensors or IoT, whatever you want to call it, we've made it easy. It, it, it doesn't have to be scary. Because after all, your air conditioning maybe turns on at a set temperature or your lights might if you've got a smart home or you know, so certain things can act on certain things. I had a, I had a classroom uh, a student where he uh, designed a um, hand sanitizer, just and it was so simple. He just used the like this water pump and he put it into hand sanitizer, and he used the robot's front uh, distance sensors. So as ultrasonic. soon as you put your ultrasonic, as soon as you put your hand there, it turned on the water pump and. Just like this with two lines of code, he did it with a couple of lines of code. And then I said to him, okay, can you detect when there is no um, liquid in the in the hand sanitizer? Mm -hmm. So, and, and he did that very easily. So yeah, uh, having the real data, again, with the physical and virtual, having that real data then represent that in the virtual is, you know, it, it, it's really a great deal of learning. And I think with that data, you know, they can then export it to an Excel spreadsheet and then that can we can teach them graphs because I think this is one of the most powerful things <laughs> is to understand an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. Uh, we have to teach Nearly that bed to time right now. Students. That's where I live now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love Excel. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> So our lesson plans, we've got over 100 lesson plans, cross-curricula, um, you know, um, teachers can actually upload their own lessons, um, this lesson plan, it's a project for the teacher and the student that they can see, um, and Amanda has done an amazing um, project, uh, so actually how to get started and things like that, so we will put that link in the, as soon as we finish the PowerPoint, we'll cross over to that link and then Amanda can talk a little bit more about that. So we, we're nearly there. This, come on, this is getting next, uh, next Fun one. fact, there's uh, 10 sheep to every person in New Zealand. And how is that relevant to cows? Sorry, it's my ADHD. <laughs> there's more cows than people in Nebraska too. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, oh. fun fact. Yeah, there we go. yeah, we have one. <laughs> we're 
it's, I don't know that we've done them. I don't know that ends in the math as you did, 10 sheep to one person, but yeah, they do say there's more. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yes, um, there's the classroom pack and that is what Amanda's got to the library and you can then go and get that and go and play around. So you'll see... Are those those longhorn cows? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's beef and there's dairy. dairy. There's both. Little combination. I'm not picky. <laughs> <laughs> So today we are going to show you that smart city mat, but the one that's in the classroom pack is the warehouse and Mars. Um, and there's some new virtual worlds as well. So it's really um, great stuff. Okay, well, we got to the end. Now we've been talking, we need to see, and hopefully Krista can help us. Uh, we can give away this little robot. Hopefully they can see. So this is Kaibot, which is just the world's first hybrid robot. So we're not going to talk about this one, but it's our latest robot. And it's a really cool little robot. So we're going to ask a question. And you're going to have to answer it in your question and answer section. Um, and we'll try and make it easy. You need to name um, four. We're going to make it hard. Four features of Kai's clan. And the first one doing that is going to win this little Kaibot. So if you guys do that, and then we can stop the, what's the next slide? Um, yeah. So if they put that into the chat. Um, and so would you um, type into the question section, what are four features of Kai's clan? Anyone can do that. So did you want to switch over to um, doing a demo or waiting to see what comes in? Or could you stop sharing the slides? Yeah. yeah. OK, do you want to go? Just I just want to um, kind of cross over to Kai's clan, the librarian um, preparation document, because that's a really okay. amazing document. So, I think it's this one and this one. Is that? Yeah. That can you see that one? Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. So Amanda, do you want to talk? I know you say grade three, so I'm really interested in that. You know, we sometimes get feedback. Oh, it's a little bit hard. But what was your take on it? Do you want to talk a little bit about this? So, guessing the guy like the grades and age ranges that this can apply to has been kind of tricky, and it's mostly because kids that, that younger kids can actually be a lot more advanced than we think they are and when kids are sitting down next to a parent or an older sibling then they can use it a lot more effectively than they would just independently on their own so i actually bumped it down to grade three just because kids get help kids can wait we don't want to put people off if they have the skill and the ability to do it and they we just don't want we've also run into parents that said it says grade five in the box so i'm not going to get this and i'm not going to let my kids have this because i think it's going to be for some reason they think it's going to be dangerous or just something that they can't use i don't know why it's adorable little grippers <laughs> so i just bumped it down i might change it to five whatever we'll figure it out but so the reason that I put this together is because I know that we talked a whole lot about Industry 4.0 technologies, but usually people ask, what in the world are those? I know that we pulled up, like, I love that slide that you had with the sensor pack where the kid actually put together that water pump and then made the hand sanitizer. But then people don't always put together that is the Internet of Things and people don't always know that the Internet of Things is one of the Industry 4.0 technologies. So I put together a mini little cheat sheet that said you got robotics, you have artificial intelligence, IOT, augmented reality, and virtual reality. We think about all those topics separately, but in real life, you actually mix like mix and match them all together. So when you see a robot in a warehouse, it's not just a robot. You're also talking about the Internet and the things and AI simultaneously. You have a little triad going on there. So the next thing that people ask is that, cool you just told me that i can learn all this stuff with kai's clan and kai's clan is doing all this awesome amazing stuff but how can i actually learn this what is my path forward so i put together the these learning pathways so that you can actually choose to 
learn the Internet of Things, or you can start learning about augmented and virtual reality, or you can learn about artificial intelligence or whatever thing that you are interested in. And if you scroll down far enough here, I'm looking for the learning pathways that should be down toward the end. This is this is an amazing document. <laughs> and it looks like I need to fix a little bit of the, a little bit of the formatting because some of my images are thrown off, but that's an easy fix. There's learning pathways. And so the learning pathways is you can choose to start with robotics, IO, and AI, or you can choose robotics, AR, and VR. And if you scroll down just a touch more, you'll start to see these little charts. So these little charts are what you can actually follow to choose your lesson plans and then progress through to skills. And on the right side, I put in a little tech explanation. So it's a little cheat sheet so that you can learn how that technology is actually used in the real world. So even though you as a facilitator aren't super familiar with this technology that you might be learning yourself right now, you can just basically read off this sheet and tell students how it's actually used. And that gets kids more engaged with it. And you can even pull up a little video that shows how all that stuff actually works and what it looks like. So I put we together all, those additional explanation stuff at the end. Yeah, we all need so, to know how to navigate our way to McDonald's. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's all that, which is really good. <laughs> and note to self, fix my picture alignment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So oh, no, that, that's fantastic. Um, you know, we really appreciate it. And the other thing is, you know, we can help with onboarding. So if you do like the kit and you decide, oh, your school want to maybe get one, um, we, Amanda, I'm sure we can work something out and make sure that that onboarding process is really, really easy. Now, Krista, do we have a winner? We do. We have um, two two different people had typed in, but one did get in ahead of the other one, um, I think. So here's the answer from the first person. It says, um, multiplayer coding, uh, create robot avatars, control and code VR simulations, um, and sensors and data creations. I think that's more than four things. <laughs> oh my gosh, when you hear that, it Extra sounds credit. like just so much. Wow. <laughs> yeah. We were very busy designing this product. <laughs> So I will just say also that the second person that did type in too, and we will announce who it is too, I just wanted to get, um, also had good um, things that they noticed too, the cross-curricular lesson plans, uh, combining augmented reality and virtual reality with robotics, um, kids working together, um, and then using Blockly and or Python to code your robots. That's all. That's very good. So who was that winner? Uh, the first one that got in was um, Wendy, Wendy Kettleson from our Lead Lincoln Township Library here in Wausau, Nebraska. Awesome. Yay. Yay. Well, in touch. Congratulations. Yeah. We'll be in touch. Okay, so let's jump over. Enough of all this. Let's jump and play with the real robots, Bruce. The real robots. The real robots. That's what I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay. Right, uh, so here we've got our physical mat, and you can see the Kai's, uh, Kai's Clan uh, interface on the screen. We also, at the same time of having the physical robots, you can see Unlucky 13. Why have you got Unlucky 13 here? <laughs> he never behaves himself, that robot. Um, so, um, Robot 1, as I'm moving it around in my hand, you can see it on the screen moving it around as well. So we can do some fun things here. Um, so if I click on robot one, we can see the X, the Y coordinate because our physical mat has a grid system on it that also has X and Y. Um, right, what are we gonna do, Renel? Um, I think just dry. Why don't we go, let's go and pick up this little object. So the, you'll see these little objects, this just 3D printed. I'm always naughty. I put a little chocolate in there and I say, who can pick up the chocolate first? They can have it. Boy, do I always win that one. So all we do, so I mean, this is as a, a student and a teacher would kind of see the same thing. 
but we've also got a classroom kind of management in here so we can add the students in here and allocate robots so not every student needs to be driving a robot they can do other things remember we've got all those other technologies uh, they can be uh, running those monitoring those so let's get this robot driving okay so robot one we're going to move to what coordinate this block no, so it's show the it's just a bit of a lump in that mat okay. so that block so we can see that block is at what is that a 114 that's a 108 can i have 114 okay one, one. thank you oh, robot 13 okay so 114 if we click on it here on the mat you can see it on the thing because we've got these qr codes and you can like print mm -hmm. these qr codes out yourselves and Put them on lego or whatever you like okay so we want to go to 114 so 114 if i click on it it is located at 4135 so we just type in 4135 now the reason this is five centimeters away because you've got to calculate the distance of the grippers you know it's like how far the distance is from the center of the robot to the gripper so we have that so this is actually the center of the robot, not over here. That's why there's a stop ahead of it. And I will leave Bruce to figure it out, but that's not five centimeters, it's gonna be more, but that's okay. That's how we learn. Yes, maybe it's five inches. <laughs> uh, and then we're gonna to move to back to our uh, corner base over here. And let's uh, drop off the object. So it's just really, pretty easy this uh this code you know it's just block blockly code if you used blockly before uh, no i don't want that block i want to move backwards. backwards say 10. yeah okay and then i can play a song and i can just i'll just do that quick example so just showing you how easy it is so this is the physical robot on the physical mat that you can see Ooh. now moving around here it goes <laughs> and those nasty little grippers Woo. <laughs> <laughs> oh and he's going to bring it home okay yeah let's bring it home i hope he's going to drop it off now you will see that bruce is just you know he's just ignored all the roads and he's going straight into the sea <laughs> we're just teaching really quickly what are x and y coordinates so um <laughs> you know so so that's really good but the next step would be you know obviously there is some ai in here as well so you can actually follow the path of our roads instead of just going over straight you know to an x and y so with our smart city map there is like solar farms and there's a beehive i absolutely love this i don't know if you can actually see this beehive where's this beehive here Oh, this yeah. is the and we've got a whole bunch of lessons around bees because without bees i think our world whew, i don't know if our world will survive mm -hmm. so you know one of the really fun things about bees is when they go back into their hive they actually fly in a little figure eight so we can actually code make our robots code that um and do that before they go in there or one of the other lessons is it may start raining and they all then swarm back towards the hive. So there's lots of real world. This is actually what bees do in the real world. So why don't we just sort of, um, you know, code them to do the same? But, you know, so it's normal. Don't get too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I can see we need to focus. Uh, but let's look at the fun bits, Bruce. Look, look, those um, virtual viewer. This is what all right, we've just got a flat mat here. What is the virtual well, why don't viewer? We get the tablet out. Okay. We can download the get virtual the, viewer as well. Get the iPad out. Yeah. So uh, a cool thing with with uh, Kai's clan is that uh, those kids can, you just click on this magic wand and you can import uh, models from Tinkercad or Minecraft. And then um, before the, before they, before they come into the classroom, before they come into the teacher's account, and the teacher has to approve those models to use before they are available for all the students. So that is, you know, that is a really handy thing. 
So we can choose any, um, any QR code to be a virtual character. So we can do that from Sandbox. So Sandbox is our virtual environment. So we just click that and go, okay, we want, um, you know, so we, we've got a library in here that you can choose. There's, there's loads of models in here. It can be a little wagon and we can change robot one to be uh, a wagon. So we'll just wait for uh, Renal. So there's a built-in virtual viewer um, that's built into the browser uh, for Chromebooks or computers, but we also have a separate app uh, which Renal's going to switch over to. Uh, so on our themes, on our app, you would actually see there is two different themes around the smart city map. Mm -hmm. So that's smart city and sea rise. So this is our new app. You can actually have a bit of information. What is sea rise levels all about? Mm -hmm. And we're going to download this one. And you're going to see what the world looks like in 2075. Okay. Epic. It's kind of the worst situation that's happened after global <laughs> warming. So be prepared. And, Get your yeah. um, swimming costume out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So where's our robot one? I want to find robot one. Okay. Let me just do this. I can see. It's robot. a very dark theme. We should have chosen the other theme. Okay. I'll choose the other theme if it's a bit dark. Yeah. Okay, it's a bit dark to show, but you can go and look at it. Even if you just um, upload your virtual viewer, you can have a look at the different maps. Okay, okay I just want to find Robert one. Just over here. Okay, so let's can we focus on Robert one there? Okay, so um, if you show that to the camera right now. Okay, so you can see Robert one is like a news reporter van at the moment. But we're gonna we're gonna modernize it. Yeah. Turn it into a wagon. The road. Driving in the road in the in the bushes. So now kids can <laughs> really. <laughs> so now it's a little Minecraft uh, wagon uh, that you know the kids so they can make it their own. Um, mm -hmm. Not just the robots can change, but also those 3D printed objects can can be characters as well. Why don't you turn it's on like that? Change. That's all, that's so quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so now what we can do, we can actually go and switch on AR. And I'm hopefully that this is going to pick up. We're going to use the yeah. other robot, I mean the other camera. Let me just catch it. There we go. Okay. Can I see that? It's yep. our messy office there at the back. Yep, yep. Wow. And now, click on anything. You can't click on anything oh, yeah. in an AR. So what we can do is we can turn on some layers. So we can turn on the mat view, turn off exterior. So now if you go down right now, now to tilt up, yep, you can see the back of our messy office. So where's our, where's our robot? So let's put a robot in the view. Um, there's the wagon. Yeah, you were there. Oh, okay. There's our little wagon. And there he is there. So, so it's sort of um, a reward for the students that when they then code their robots, they can then go and see it, what it looks like in augmented reality. And if I've got virtual reality goggles, then I will be sitting in robot one. If that's my robot, I'll be sitting in robot one. Um, and then driving around so in my smart city. I'm just putting the wagon on fire. Really? Let's see if that's going to work. I'm running it. And there we and there go. We Woo! <laughs> now we need the fire brigade out as well. So this is where we were talking about, um, I'm just going to stop this. Yeah where not every student actually needs to code the robot. You can have students that just control all the virtual elements. You know, they can put it on ice, they can put speech bubbles, they can transform it, make it smaller or bigger. Um, they can load these avatars. So, you know, say we have four students per group, 
one student may be doing the hard coding, the other one will look on the mat and do the X, Y, and what is the path that they're going to do. The other one may add a sensor and get all that data um, and do some graphing. So it is, it's all about collaboration. So here you'll see, here's our lesson plan. So just go to Mars, for example. So it's one of our other mats. Um, click here on digging for data. That's sort of an intermediate middle school. I love number three, go activity three. Uh, and then if you go on the question mark, the question mark is your lesson plan for the teacher and the students. So here it will tell the teacher how long it's going to take, what's the complexity. And it's three groups working together. I love this one. It's actually there's a fire on Mars and they need to go and put it out. So the one, the one robot will have a light sensor. So he's actually waiting for the sun to come up over Mars, which means the ice is going to start melting. So robot two can go and take and pick up some ice and then go and put the fire out. So it's a whole collaboration process, um, programming your robots. But, uh, you know, it is a lot. And you know, each child can do you know, whatever their strength is, they can, they can do. And that's... And I think one of the really good things we saw in the previous, we ran a space um, competition and one of the schools, the teacher, they had these um, kids in groups and I, I actually went in to go and have a look and help. And then the one student was really quiet sitting in the corner and I asked the teacher and she said, no, he's autistic. And I'm like, well, how can we get him involved? She goes, well, he's not really into coding. Then the one friend said to me, but do you know he is so good at Minecraft? And we're like, okay, why don't you go and create the four spaceships and your Martian vehicles? And he did an amazing job. And when he saw his things come alive in augmented reality, he got pulled into this group and he was actually the little leader of his group. And, you know, it is just so good to see kids really getting engaged and then, you know, getting them off the robots, that's probably the teacher's biggest problem. <laughs> so like, that's my plan. Like one of the activities that I like to recommend for like the warehouse mat is for students to separate out into like those two separate groups. And then one of them plays the part of like the warehouse operator who's supposed to be designing a new warehouse. And so their job is to go through and build the virtual simulation because they wouldn't know how to do any of the coding part. They would just know what they want it to look like and they would they would know like the layout and like how they want to design. But then you have the other team that actually, like you said, does the actual coding of it. So then the trick part of it is that we don't let them actually see, we pretend that they're actually remote working. And we say, you can't actually see this warehouse. You're in this other room. Hmm. How are you going to do this? So we've actually had people set up and like they would pull out their smartphone and do a Zoom conversation and do a walkthrough with the phone of like the pretend warehouse space. And then out again, you know, out. so it's like you're trying to you're teaching them not just the coding, but how you would actually communicate as a team, yeah. which I thought it's was kind of fun. Real, it's real mm. life scenarios. You know, I think one of the big problems is students leave school and because they've learned like in silo or, you know, like all by themselves to then go yeah. into a work environment where they have to be a team. You know, we've seen this. We sometimes get interns. And you, we would say to them, okay, do something. They would do it, deliver it, and say, there it is. And then we would say, you know, can you make some changes? And they're like, what? I've already given my work. It's like, well, in the real world, we have to adapt to make changes. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the other things that's really fun is one of the mats is the create mat. And you can actually play chess on it. So yeah. instead of not without robots, without robots, so you just use these little things. It's got all the chess on, and this is all on the dashboard. And I can set up my if I'm all the black um, players, and maybe Amanda is the white ones. I can actually have a virtual chess competition with you. Mm. But um, like your example, Amanda, of 
of doing remote, you know, having it in another classroom and have students there. What you can, what I love to do is have two mats of the same type, so two warehouse mats, and then have two classrooms if you can, either remote schools or in the same school, it doesn't matter, um, yeah. where you have these students controlling that mat and these students controlling, it. so you switch over controls and then you can see who can, you know, do get their warehouse working first. Yeah. So, so yeah. lots of opportunities, lots of, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's a STEM toolbox. And then when you talk about those, you know, um, grade three students, they may just do that backwards, forwards, open grippers, close grippers, and maybe do their little character because even the grade threes all play Minecraft these days. They don't mm -hmm. have to go senses. But then when you get to middle school, junior high, that's when the power of the IoT, the data comes in. So it's a real, like Bruce was saying, a scaffolding um, experience. They can build on what they learned when they were younger too. And uh, yeah, move up with it. I think that's on the screen. Oh. Okay, um, any questions from our lovely participants? Yeah, uh, does anybody have any questions? Go ahead and type into your questions section or your chat. You can type in there and any questions you have about um, Kai's education, Kai, um, Kai's clan, the robots. Um, we do have links on our um, session page to get to their website for anyone who wants to purchase. And now, as I said, they're based you know, this, you know, start in New Zealand, but um, if you do order something, you know, do you want to buy these? They don't come from New Zealand, correct? I mean, you all that's, have. <laughs> that's correct. So we've got uh, two warehouses in in the US, um, and and the other thing as well, it is a lot of product, and we provide free PD to get you on board um, mm -hmm. with it. So you know you're going to be spending time with us, mm -hmm. uh, just like you collaborate with the product. We're going to be collaborating with you and getting getting you skilled up and be becoming a Kai uh, engineer. And um, you can just go on our website, it sort of shows you all the resellers. So, you know, you don't have to buy directly through us. Um, I'm sure there is preferred resellers from your schools. Um, you can always talk to Amanda and stuff and we can um, just make it work. Um, but yeah, for us, it's really important that we can just make sure that um, you guys are familiar. Getting it set up the first time, um, it's a little bit challenging. Um, I always laugh, there's a tripod you would think, how difficult is this tripod? It can't, cannot be so difficult. <laughs> but ask Amanda, it, it's just a twist and turn, but it can be really, <laughs> it just doesn't stay. Um, but it's a lot of fun. I had, <laughs> I had a moment, but I got there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so easy. Our session yeah. here, we have a link to the Kai's Education um, page for anyone who wants to um, go there and look um, more about it. Um, and I'm also going to add, um, Amanda just sent me the link to her um, librarian preparation guide too. So we'll have a direct link for you all there as well. Um, we do have questions coming in. Um, let's uh, see, we've got, someone wants to know, um, well, does this work with the Oculus VR headset? You know, funny you ask that question. Our developer is sitting all day like this <laughs> on his oculus on his oculus so uh yes we are just about because we've revamped our whole virtual uh environments we've we've um you know made we've up uh, we've, added up, more. we've added more that's the <laughs> word uh, but yes we will soon be uh supporting oculus all right and so just as a side oh, as a side note we also do circulate the Oculus Quest Meta Quest 2. So if you do want to check out the Kai's clan and check out the Oculus Quest 2 at the same time, you can do that. Are you guys going to be now. getting Quest 3? It looks so good. It does like it looks shiny. Because the <laughs> the Pro, I think it supports augmented and virtual reality at the same time. And yeah. so it's on the wish list, but do you know when it comes out again? It's. I think it's soon. The Quest Three yeah. is coming soon. A very lightweight uh, headset. It doesn't support the AR, which is okay because the AR, yeah. you know, the AR headset is a bit. Mm, um, mm. but uh, it looks really good. Yeah. Mm. It's and as a side note, I did 
The formatting on the Kai's Clan preparation guide looked fine on my computer, so I just saved it as a PDF. So the link that I put into the chat actually links over to a PDF that I uploaded to the Google Drive. Ah, so no. it's probably just viewing issues on different monitor sizes or viewing issues across whatever. But when I PDF'd it, it was fine. So that shouldn't right. be a problem anymore. Thank you very much. And then I just wanted to let people know as well, I will be at the oh, right. American Association for School Librarians. Um, that is from the 17th to the 21st of October, and that is in Tampa, Florida. Um, and Kai's Clan will be there showing off both robots and we'll have a playground. So if anybody is around there, um, yeah, please come and say hi. Mm. And that's what's an 18 hour flight for you? That's a long, <laughs> it's a long <laughs> but Renelle's feet get there before her <laughs> head does. Because she's very, very tall. Yeah, finish the sentence. Yeah. Very <laughs> and I'm quite condensed. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, it'll be a good, an easy flight. Yeah, yeah. Um, was there there any other question? um something that really you know, related to the coding and whatnot. Where does the name Kai come from? Is that uh, named after something, someone in particular? So um, Kai in, in New Zealand, Kai is actually, the word Kai means food. And we like to think here yeah, that food is knowledge and and also knowledge and AI um, is mm -hmm. also K-A-I. So. Yeah. So in New Zealand, oh, yeah. double meaning, yeah. 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 So in Te Rio, which is our um, local language, um, that is Kai is, yeah, Kai is food. Um, mm. So it's very important for us to have knowledge. And that's why, you know, if we mm. can feed the tummy and we can feed the brain at the same time, uh, you know, the chocolates, I have to feed my tummy, uh, <laughs> but I can also feed the brain. So, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, anyway. on. So on KaiBot, it has um, uh, Spanish uh, and our local language, and also English. So, um, yeah. I should have asked that before. I always <laughs> wondered, but now I know. <laughs> there should be a little history block on the website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And no, knowledge of Kai. <laughs> So you'll, um, yeah, so that's all. I don't know if there's any other questions or if people want to see something that else we can show uh, them. Um, we can yeah. Um, we don't have any other questions that I see. If anybody does have any questions, we still have some time left here. We started a little late to make sure everyone could get connected today. Um, so if um, anyone does have any other questions you want to ask, anything that you want to know about, um, if you want to see anything else uh, demonstrated, definitely get it into your, um, questions section here. Um, I will keep an eye on that. Um, Why don't we add a little sensor? Okay, just, and then... just grab one. Yeah. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make Kai fly. You want to fly? Oh, okay. Um, here let me you want me to make you all a presenter again so you can share your screen? Uh, yes please, yes please. Yeah, here we go. Um, you can see that pop up so you can grab the screen. Yeah. Uh, there we go. So right. one. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do this on the fly. Uh, <laughs> I think it's this view we need. I uh, know this one. Uh, one. I'm looking at the window. So we're gonna watch what Renal does here. This is how difficult it is to add a sensor. <laughs> so the white plug goes into the white socket. We're using a light sensor. Correct. And the green socket goes into the back of the Kai robot, which is green as well. Snap it on, and you can see that close up. Here we go. So that's the sensor added and plugged in. So color coded, very easy. And now we go onto the screen. I think you can see my screen, and that is robot one. Yep. So you can see robot one over here. We click on the little robot guy icon. We click on green because we plugged it into the green port. We type in light because we we monitoring how much light is in our dark New Zealand office. Click save. Now that is uh, that light sensor is now set. So if we click robot one, we can see the percentage of light in the room. And if Renelle puts her thumb over that, you can see that percentage goes down. Mm -hmm. 
now, if we want to make something fly, do you want to do this? Because in New Zealand, we have um, in the far uh, south of New Zealand, uh, we have unicorns. <laughs> and uh, those part are of Middle Earth and Lord of the Rings. Yes, um, so they are located uh, somewhere <laughs> over here. <laughs> so if you, if anyone knows this this location, uh, we that's where we find our unicorns. Um, but um, yeah, where was I? Uh, robot one. Where is that robot? Pesky robot one. Okay, well, we can go to bots and select robot one. Okay, so uh, the TV crew are monitoring some abnormally. And what we're going to do is we're going to make that fly. Uh, or oh, let's make robot that, that 114 fly based on the light sensor. So I think it's transform, is it? Yeah, transform, fly, fly at height. And we're going to choose 114 down here. And you can see here, we can say fly at height. So let's just run that and see what happens to the little car behind us. Does anything change? Yes, it goes up one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now what, what will happen if we use the light sensor? So now we need to go to bits, environmental, add on light sensor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this light sensor right into the height. So instead of that car going up one, it's now going to go up the light sensor value. And I don't know what the output's going to be, but one is currently 87%. Oh, it's a percentage, yeah. So bot, bot, that 114 is going to go up whatever this value changes to. And it's in a loop. So we just run this code. It's going to go really high. It's going, I think it's going to go very high. Okay, let's just click on it before it disappears. Okay, we're flying. <laughs> flying cars Whoa. right across the ocean. Woo! Okay. So if I put my finger on it, we should be able to bring it back down closer to Earth. There we go. We're coming down, coming down. You blocked out some of the light, yeah. So yeah, so we can, and then uh, we could quickly uh, change that to uh, instead of it being a car, a car, we can maybe make that into something that actually flies. Um, a cat? No, no cats don't fly. <laughs> uh, there's... there's a space. Oh, pod. there's a rocket. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Okay, so we can just stop and run that code again, and we'll change the car into a rocket. Okay, there's a rocket, and it's flying based on the light sensor. So this is how you can um, have real-world data mm -hmm. being represented in the virtual. Yeah, that is so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> And I think, you know, this is where you can see that whole collaboration process, um, you know, and that can come up. And, and this, you know, we can teach this in English. Write a creative story about, you know, a smart city and then use your characters, create those characters and then code them and then see what it looks like in your virtual world and how does it look like in your augmented world and then use that sensor data and that is how you can actually do an assessment with your students in the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so you give them a task. So we always say, once you get your classroom pack, do some of the lesson plans, but maybe then the last two or three weeks of the term, let them create their own project. Mm -hmm. And then that can be a really good assessment tool for a teacher to say, well, can they code? Do they understand AR? How was their English lesson plan? You know, and then when they get a bit older, switch over to Python, you know, and let them start having a bit of a play with the text-based coding as well. <laughs> right, we have got, <laughs> I don't know if anybody is watching The Witcher on Netflix. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> we can have Is that some. what this is supposed to be? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think just, those are happy nights. Here's our, um, 
automated warehouse. This is what the man was talking about. So you'll see there's some um, forklifts and there's a tractor. And actually the fun thing about that, now I don't know if I'll be able to do it. Will I be able to put something on that platform, Bruce? What's that? If I may be uh, yes. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're just changing over to Kaibot's factory. Oh, yeah. okay. Oop. So we've just added new themes to each mat. I don't know, Amanda, if you had a chance. So this is Kai, the Kaibot factory. <laughs> so, um, a lot of fun where you actually have to go and build Kaibot. So you get three different colors and then you have to put it to the assembly plant and put it together. And if you do it right, the drone will actually come and pick up your Kaibot and fly it away for delivery. Or if it's wrong, it will chuck it in the furnace. So a really <laughs> cool little lesson that you can do. Nice. This is what I was wondering what the new update looked like. And that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like the little, I like the added drone feature. That's kind of nice. Yeah. So the drone comes in, if you have a successful uh, Kaibot ma made, then the drone takes it away. Uh, all these one, twos, and threes are switches. So you can have multiple students uh, controlling the switches with their with their robots. So once you where's 108? I think it's that one over there. You just like slightly just move it. Yeah. So if you come back to uh, one, whoop, there we go. And now that activates another package to come out. Oh, there it is. There we go. So you do it again. Do it again. Just a very slight movement right now. Yeah, again, just do it. Keep on doing it. Every time you push the button, another one comes out. There it comes. Yeah, yeah. only greens. Wait, oh, there comes a red one. So you need three colors, uh, three different colors to build a Kaibot. So you can see in the background, mm -hmm. there's blue, red, and green. So we need some, and then we need to put them into storage. Um, and, and then we can build a, a robot. So you can just set robot one up as a loop going backwards, forwards, and just get as many packages. Oh, there comes the blue. Yeah. So now if you go over to two, position two, so further on where the rockets are, I think. Yeah. There we go. And now do the same thing on and off. So you just drive your robot on and off the mat, on and off the robot, off switch two. And that'll, and you can see in the background now, um, if I can click on it. So you can see how the, the boxes are now coming into the storage and the robots are putting them into the shelves. And then once we do that, then we take them off and build a little Kaibot. Yeah. So, um, so that's a little bit about that. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I don't see any other uh, questions, any other desperate questions that came in. It looks like we answered everyone's questions and just saying, let's say this looks really fun. I want to definitely want to take a look at it, um, dig into it more. I think we're going to have a lot of uh, interest in this. Yeah. Especially with the things you have available for them to, to get these, Amanda. Yeah. Now, which ones do we have? Which do we have here at the commission to loan out? So we have the Kai's Clan classroom pack. Okay. And then I'm also um the Kai bot that you sent over. I'm also letting people check it out to like explore it and see if that's something that they want to get. So they can also just check that out and try play before around you with it. Yeah. So yeah. and so like with the tech kits or the mail, some people use that for their actual classroom activity or for their library activity and others just check it out to see if it's something that they actually want to get for their own library or for their own school. Yeah. So it's a 50-50 shot. Yeah. I don't actually, always know why people check yeah. it out either. <laughs> We're seeing a huge uptake under librarians um, mm -hmm. of bringing it. We've got, you know, Houston used Public Libraries, they've bought, oh, I think they bought about 10 different kits um, yeah. to set out. So definitely, um, you know, even when we go to ISTE and stuff, a lot of um, this 
yeah, the libraries are really becoming a very popular place, like a maker space that they can actually oh, yeah. run these programs. Yep. We have lots um, of libraries in Nebraska doing maker spaces with all sorts of different yeah. things, using the things that Amanda has, using things that we've provided with them through grants. Oh yeah. Amanda, do you have a, a preparation guide for Kaibot yet? Just oh, you not would? yet. Okay. <laughs> it should be much easier um, <laughs> because it's yeah. a very easy onboarding one. Yeah. It's and since a lot of the the what took the longest with the, with this was probably the industry 4.0 like cheat sheet pages, and since those are already together, it won't mm -hmm. take as long. Mm -hmm. But it's also I don't know when I'm going to have time to get to it yet. Uh, <laughs> it's getting there. <laughs> yeah. No pressure. That's, that's a lot of work. I love I love how you've um, you've combined the 4.0. Um, the graphics are, are really good as well, and it 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 really spells it out. And I think um, with Kaibot, we are actually working with um, one of the ST um, authors, and they're doing a maths um, K to eight mapping it. So actually, a, a progressive um, alignment with the standards, with the Common Core standards. Mm -hmm. Now that's going to take a little bit of time to finish, but that would be really really good that you can then actually do with Kaibot. So we are busy um, working with that one as well. Great. So lots of new things coming. Awesome. All right. Um, I think um, we're a little after uh, four o'clock here. I think we'll work on wrapping up the show here. Since you don't have any other questions coming in, any other desperate questions people have, um, you can always reach out to Amanda um, or Bruce or Anel, whoever um, you want to at their various uh, places um, but I think um, yeah we will uh, work on wrapping things up here for today um, that, thank you so much Bruce and Ronell for being here with us this is great I'm so glad we were able to figure this out and get you here live um, we'd originally planned to do some of our recording but nah. <laughs> this is so much better <laughs> um, uh, talk so much about, yeah. huh? what do you got to do talks, we talked so much about chocolate that I had to get some oh. <laughs> Well, I, I better not that's nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I have to send you some New Zealand chocolate. Chocolate does not come with the kits. No. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, I'll have to make myself earn it now and just, yeah. <laughs> just put it on top and you gotta you gotta you gotta yeah. earn it you to go and grab it. Yeah. Uh, Krista, you will send me Wendy's details so I can get a cardboard out to her. Yes, I will. Yep, I will send you her her um, information to get you all connected. So um, yes, Wendy, that should be coming soon um, to your library. Thank you very much. Thanks yeah, thank everybody. you. Yeah. All right. Yes, so I think that'll yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Ronell, Bruce, and Kai. <laughs> uh, thanks, Amanda, for getting this set up and connected and everything. Um, we'll see you back in in another month at the end of September with something. I don't know what we'll be talking about yet. And a different chocolate too. I'll mix it up. <laughs> so um, yeah, that'll um, wrap up today's show. Um, it has been recorded, and it will be on um, by the end of the day tomorrow. It should be ready uh, as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperates with me. Our recordings go up on our YouTube channel, um, off of our main Encompass Live page. We have a link here to our archives. So it'll be here at the top of the page. Uh, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know that it's available. Um, we'll also push out onto our Facebook page. If you like to use Facebook, we have a Facebook page for Encompass Live where we promote about the upcoming shows. Um, and we do announce, here's the one from the last previous one, recording available. Uh, we'll put that out there. Also, uh, Twitter, Instagram, we use our hashtag, a little abbreviation of the name Encump Live. So um, look there as well for when um, the recording is available for this show. Um, yes, all right. I was just making sure there wasn't anything new coming in um, before I totally um, wrap things up. So thank you everybody for being here with us. Um, and. Um, Keep an eye on our schedule here. Um, I'm, I'm filling in dates here in September. I, I know there's nothing in the calendar, but I'm here, out here just yet. But as soon as I get things finalized, you'll see new things added to the schedule here. Um, 
for other dates in September and October and going forward for the rest of the year. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, Amanda um, and Kai and Bruce and Rennell. And hopefully we'll see you all on a at a future episode of Encompass Live. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so Bye. much, Scott. Stay thank cool, you. stay warm, depending on where you are in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.